I am Subha, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE. Today, I am going to discuss about the small scale trading and multiple propagation. So, small scale trading and multiple propagation is coming under the wireless communication. So, why we are go for wireless communication? In previous years, we used wired communication. Nowadays, we are using the wireless communication. So, in wireless communication, many things are happened. One is small scale trading. In the wireless communication, we are going to discuss about the small scale trading and multiple propagation. When we are transmitting the signal from transmitter to receiver, there is many obstacles are there in transmitter and receiver. So, in order to reduce that fading and noise or interference, we have to go for the multipath propagation and small scale fading. So, small scale fading is nothing but it is the fluctuations. So, small scale fading it occurs when the rapid fluctuation is occurred in the radio signal in a time delay. So, now we are going to discuss small scale fading and multipath propagation. So, small scale fading is nothing but it describes the rapid fluctuations of the amplitude, phase of the delays of a radio signal over short period of time or travel distance. So, the small scale fading is caused by the interference between two portions of the transmitted signal which arrive at the receiver at slightly different times. These waves are called the multipath waves. So, we combine at the receiver antenna for the resultant signal which can vary widely in amplitude and then phase. So, these are all the main things we are going to discuss in effects of the small scale fading. So, small scale fading in the distribution of the intensity, the relative propagation time and the bandwidth of the propagated signal and signal attenuation and phase shifting and invisible interference last one is with error rate. So, these are all the points, the effect of the small scale fading. So, the factors influencing the small scale fading. So, major, the four basic types in factors that influence the small scale fading. So, first one is multipath propagation and second one is speed of the mobile and third one is speed of the surrounding objects and fourth one is transmission bandwidth of the channel. So, multipath propagation is nothing but it is the presence of reflecting objects and scatters that causes the multiple versions of the signal to arrive at the receiver. So, this multipath propagation mainly different amplitudes and time delays. So, it causes the total signal at receiver to fade or distort. So, these multipath propagation, there are three main concepts are there. One is reflecting, second one is refraction and third one is diffraction. So, the three main components are used in the multipath propagation. So, the second one is speed of the mobile. So, the speed of the mobile is nothing but it is mainly caused by Doppler shift at each multipath component and the random frequency modulation. So, third one is speed of surrounding objects. So, the speed of surrounding objects is also causes time varying Doppler shift on the multipath component. So, last one is transmission bandwidth of the channel. So, the transmitter radio signal bandwidth and bandwidth of the multipath channel affect the receiver signal properties. So, in the transmission bandwidth of the channel, there are two main properties of that. One is the if amplitude fluctuates or not, if the signal is distorted or not. So, these two properties are used in the factors that influencing small scale fading in the wireless communication. So, this is the last point of the factors influencing small scale fading. So, the next one is Doppler effect. So, Doppler effect is nothing but it is when a transmitter or receiver is moving, that is, it is different than the frequency of transmission. So, this is called the Doppler effect. So, simply we can say the Doppler effect is the change of in frequency is called the Doppler shift. So, this Doppler effect or Doppler shift is mainly depends on the relative velocity of the receiver with respect to the transmitter. So, the second is the frequency of transmission. And third one is the direction of traveling with respect to the direction of the arriving signal. 
So these are all the main points coming under the Doppler effect. So in this Doppler effect, there are two times or that one is positive and the second one is negative. So the Doppler shift is positive means if the mobile is moving towards the direction of the arrival of the paper. That is, when the signal is moving from the transmitter to receiver means it is called the positive Doppler shift. Whereas the signal is traveled from the receiver to transmitter means it is called the negative Doppler shift. So these three parameters are mainly used in the multi-part channels. So one is time distortion parameter, second one is coherence bandwidth, and third one is Doppler's and coherence time. So time distortion is nothing but so the time distortion is the bandwidth of the channel is larger than the and required bandwidth. So this is called the time distortion parameters. So there are two uh, major um, types in the time distortion parameters. One is time excess delay and mean excess delay. So these time distortion parameters are mainly used in the noise threshold. So noise is nothing but the level of power below which the signal is considered as noise. So this is called the noise. So the noise threshold uh, that depends upon the distortion parameters. The values of the time distortion parameters also depends upon the noise threshold. Then if we set the noise threshold is low, then the noise will be processed as multiple and thus causing the parameter to be higher. So the time distortion parameters mainly depends upon the noise threshold. So coherence bandwidth. So coherence bandwidth is represented as QC. So coherence bandwidth is nothing but it is the range of frequencies over which the channel can be considered flat. That is, the channel passes all spectral components with equal gain and meaningful pace. So the definition that depends upon the RMS delay spread. So the coherence bandwidth is mainly depends upon the RMS delay spread. So here we are using the frequency 1 and then frequency 2 in the multi-part channel. So the receiver, in the receiver side, we are receiving these two frequencies at different times. Okay. So the frequency separation uh, can be expressed in terms of F1 minus F2. So the two sinusoidal with frequency separation greater than BC are affected by differently by the channel. So this is the coherence bandwidth. So last one is Doppler spread. So Doppler spread is nothing but it is the measure of spectral broadening caused by the motion. So we can uh, compute the Doppler shift by FP. So Doppler shift spread VD is defined as the maximum Doppler shift. So F1 is nothing but it is the maximum frequency. So we can calculate the maximum frequency by V by lambda. So V is nothing but it is the velocity, lambda is the wavelength. We are not left. If the baseline signal bandwidth is much greater than VD, then effect of the Doppler spread is negligible at the receiver. So last one is coherence time. So coherence time is the time duration over which the channel impulse response is essentially invariant. That is, the time period is 0.9 or lesser than the 0.9. So this will be causes the coherence time. So if the single period of the baseband signal is greater than the coherence time, then the signal will dissolve. Is greater than the coherence time means we can assume the coherence time as 0.9 or lesser than. We cannot assume 0.9, more than 0.9. So we can uh, assume the coherence time as less than 0.9. So we can represent the coherence time as the Tc. So it is 1 by Fn. So Fm is nothing but maximum frequency. So these, these are all the two types of uh, types of small scale fading. So mainly small scale fading is classified as based upon the multipath time delay spread and based on the Doppler spread. Uh, first one is multipath time delay spread. We can another mainly classified into two types. One is flat fading and then frequency selective fading. So in the flat fading, we are going to discuss about the two conditions of the flat fading. One is whenever the bandwidth of the signal is lesser than the bandwidth of the channel and delay spread is lesser than the single period. So it is the opposite of the flat fading. The frequency selective fading conditions are bandwidth of the signal is greater than the bandwidth of the channel and delay spread is greater than the single period. So this is the 
two main conditions for the flat fading and the frequency selective fading. So in flat fading, all signal and the delay strength is lesser than compared to the channel and then signal area. Whereas the frequency selective fading signal and the delay strength is greater than the channel and the signal period. So in the flat fading, the frequency uh, of fader in frequency spectrum in all areas, but frequency selective fading, the frequencies are fader in one part of the frequency spectrum than the other part. So this is the main uh, difference of the flat fading and the frequency selective fading. Also, the, in flat fading, the mainly the flat fading will occur. The length of the symbol period is longer than the variant. So, whereas the uh, frequency selective fading, the length of the symbol is lesser than the variant. So, based upon the Doppler split, another we can classify into two types one is fast fading and then slow fading. So, these are the conditions of fast fading and then slow fading. So, one is high Doppler split. In fast fading, we can use the high Doppler split and less coherence time compared to the symbol period. Whereas in slow fading, we are using the low Doppler spread and high coherence time in the symbol period. So the channel variations faster than the baseband signal variations and the channel variations are smaller than the signal variations in the small scale field. So uh, in multi-part propagation, so the, uh, these are about the uh, small scale fading and its uh, factors that influence in small scale fading and then types of the small scale fading. So, what main concept is that one is the multi-part propagation. So, multi-part propagation is nothing that here we have discussed that multi-part propagation. So, in the multi-part propagation, already I explained there are three types, main uh, types are the one is reflection, second one is refraction, and third one is scattering. So, when the reflection will occur means the object is earlier compared to the wavelength of the wind. So, this is the uh, reflection. Scattering, when it is occur means the scattering, the dimension is very small. So, at the time the scattering will occur. In diffraction, any object is there. Uh, so, the transmitted signal will reflect or scatter on the diffract and it will reach the receiver. So, we are going to uh, transmit the uh, signal from transmitter to receiver means there are the two main parts of that. One is the line of sight and the second one is the non line of sight. So, the line of sight is nothing but when there is any obstacles of that from the transmitter to receiver like tree or building anything it may be. So, from the transmitter to receiver, when we transmit the signal, uh, there are uh, any objects out there which is called the linear LOS, that is linear line of sight. So, N LOS means non line of sight. So, non line of sight is nothing but from the transmitter to the receiver, we are transmitting the signal, but without any object out there, means which is called the non line of sight. That's all about small scale fading and multi-part 